this Tevin? Yes, who's calling? This is the Cornerman Radio, man. Oh, uh, hold on one second, okay? All right, cool. All right. Yeah, man, we got Tevin Farmer on the line, man. Can't wait to hear what he got to say tonight. I'm back on. Yo, what's up, Tevin, man? It's good to have you on, man. It's definitely an honor, man. What's up? How are you? Man, I'm cool and, man, I'm chilling right now. So what's, what's up, up with you, up? man? How how how, how, how your day went? Oh, man, you, you know, same old routine every day. Sleep, eat, and train. I see, man. I see it on your Instagram feed how hard work you're putting in. Yeah, every day, all day. That's what I do. Yeah. I see that, man. But... Let's get into it, man. What's coming up next with you? When we gonna see you back in action, man? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm fighting March. I'm fighting March 30th in uh in New York for the NABS title. Oh, for real? Yeah. So that's a uh, that's another big opportunity to to get me closer to a world title. Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. I'm, I'm excited. Is it gonna be shown on TV? Originally was supposed to be shown on TV, but I doubt it. I'm not. I'm not. I don't think it will be. But it is what it is. Uh, I originally was was supposed to fight on uh, Showbox, but it ain't fall through. But as long as I got another opportunity, like the NABF title to put me closer to a world title, I'm okay with that. Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, we had Edna Cherry on um on Sunday night, man. He had a few words for you, man. I yeah, always I, want, I, I was, heard it. I heard it. Oh, you heard it? Yeah, I checked uh, it out. Well, what you what you thought about what he said about you? Uh, you know, that's just a random random guy, random boxer, the way he's supposed to think. But in all reality, uh, he can't tie my shoes, man. Yeah, I, I see you tweet that. I was like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it's just two different levels. You can't tie my shoes, man. Then he then, then he talk about me and Pedraza, this and that. Pedraza beat me when I wasn't taking boxing serious, man. Mm-hmm. And he, even then, I talked to Pedraza years later after I accomplished what I accomplished. And he tell me himself, I'm not fighting you unless you got a title. So that's a sign of respect, as in I'm not going to take that hard fight for nothing. Right. But it is what it is. Edna can't tie my shoes and he said he say, Oh, maybe showtime ain't winning because of, uh I'm a runner or whatever. Listen, it's a difference between great boxing, slick skills and running. Right. And you, and you, and you know this. Definitely. It was, do, all right, why why did Showtime turn down this Great fight, man, because you and Edna Cherry would have been a great fight, man. I was looking forward to it when I heard it got rumored, announced, and, uh, man, why why did Showtime turn down this fight? I don't, uh, I don't I don't know. I'm not really sure. Maybe it was interesting, maybe, which a lot of fans was, but I don't really, I don't want to really get into the politics of it and nothing like that. Mm-hmm. I just respect the, I respect the, the decision they made. And I just move forward. Hopefully, I'll be on Showtime or, or HBO once again. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to see you again, man. Cause the the display, how you display your talent and your skill level, man. These these guys got a problem to watch out for, man. Yeah, I, but I'm I'm only I'm only learning. You did me. Yeah, I only been boxing for about seven years. And I had 16 images of fights, so these dudes boxed their whole life, and they, they, they had a certain point already to where though they're not growing no more, and they can't grow no more because they already uh, reached the potential they can reach. I only been boxing for a certain period of time, and I'm still growing it. And it's scary because I'm still not at my full potential. Right. Damn, so you started seven years ago? Yes, it's crazy, right? Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot of people don't know that, but it's the truth. And when people find out, they think I'm lying. But it, it, it's the truth. I just started boxing, mm. and I just, you know, I wasn't taking serious at first. But I seen what I had, and I brought my manager Mark Chibarone along, and he's a longtime friend of the family. And he just, 
he was he already had money and, and stuff like that, and he just wanted to help me out more than anything. And come to find out, he like, damn, I got something, I got something big, and from there we just took it to another level. Mm. So what what made you enter um, the boxing field, man? Well, I you know I was a sports I was a sports man regardless, and I had no other sport to play. Football was out of season, basketball was out of season, and my brother had just started boxing. So I'm like, damn, let me uh, let me try this out. And it's crazy because the first day, I, the first time I stepped to the gym, and the first time I spar, I spar with one of the best guys at the gym, and it was like wow. And that was just my first time sparring. Wow. And then I was just like, all right, let me. And I was still bull crapping at the time, but then after my four losses, I got it together. I'm like, all right, let, I'm gonna take you serious. And since then, I just I was just beating ass all over everybody. Yeah. And, yeah, I you know, noticed that. Definitely, I noticed that shit, man. Mm-hmm. Yo, um, I wanted to. So, what made you want to take it serious, man? Like, cause, I just, you know, I always, me, me growing up, I always had dreams of to be rich. I always had dreams. I never had regular dreams. All my dreams wasn't regular. Like, uh, uh once I uh. Once I uh, seen that how potential I had, how much potential I had, I'm like, I got to take this serious, man. And I know boxing is a way out, and you can make a lot you can make a lot of millions. And was it, it's not really nobody out there for me. So I said, I'm going to take this serious. I, my manager put some money behind me. We got fights. I built, I built, I built, and boom, I signed with Luther Bella before. I uh, was reaching out to Debella at one point, and we used to talk, we used to talk. But the minute I got, like, I started kicking ass, he reached out to me, like, yo, I want to sign you. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I found Debella last year. Well, this is the second year now. And we uh, we got some fights. Some, he got me some great fights uh, to prepare me for where I'm at today. And between him and my manager, Mark Barone, I'm in a great position now. But I don't think the top guys right now will – is willing to fight me. Mm. So, so Lula Bella is treating you right, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Lula, man. He, he, he working his, he working his heart out for me. Mm. He working his heart out, and I can tell that he working his heart out. And uh, we just waiting for something to land. Right now, I can fight anybody in the world. I'm, I'm that, I'm that prepared. And, and my losses, he helped me prepare, prepare for this. And I'm, I, I thank God that I got my losses. I don't think I think without my losses, I would not be the fighter the fighter I am today. That's why every time I go into a fight with one of these upcoming prospects that's supposed to be good, I spank them because they don't have the experience and the knowledge that I have. Right. But you know what I noticed? Um, and the chair did say that you got a Bernard Whitaker and Floyd Mayweather style and shit. He he did compliment you a little bit. Yeah, 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 I all, all respect that uh, the cherry. I'm not, I'm not mad. They, they supposed to think they can beat me and stuff like that. It's boxing. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't be in the sport because you can't beat nobody. I respect that the cherry to the utmost, mm-hmm. and I, I didn't want that fight because I know he was a good fighter. Like I said, I call out all top fighters. If I don't, I wouldn't be who I am. And like I said before, I'm ready to fight top fighters. So if I mention his name, obviously. That's some type of respect I have for him, and I know he can fight. And I actually seen the fight with him and Pedraza, and it was a close fight. No, who, who you saw won that one or edged mm-hmm. it out? Honestly, guy, I'm not, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad at either decision because it was a close fight. Oh. And the fact that they gave it to Pedraza, I'm not mad either. It makes sense because if it's a close fight with a champion, you got to really beat the champion. You take me? Yeah. Like you can't have a close fight with the champion and get it took and like. It can't work like that. You got to really beat the champion. You got to beat the champion convincingly. Now, if you had to beat him convincingly and they gave it to Pedraza, I'm like, okay. But he, it was a close fight. So, and my idea, I would have given it to the champion. Oh. In my in my opinion, when I saw it, man, with my eyes, I, I, I scored it a 7-5 fight. I gave five rounds to Pedraza, and I edged it out to Edna Cherry with two rounds and shit. Yeah, but you know, all judges look at certain things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, every judge judges a fight by a certain, by a certain score system. 
One may like somebody that put pressure. Two may like the one that box. So at the end of the day, you're losing it's two to one. I'm saying you got two judges that like the way you box. So you got one judge that like the way you bang, or vice versa. So it all depends on what the judges see. And me personally, I don't really get into the judges. If they say you lost, you lost. If they say you won, you won. Mm. That's that's a that's a great analyzation, man. Yeah, man. I just go out there and fight, work hard and fight. That's it. Nothing more. Did you um did you get a chance to check out J Rock fighting last week? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my friend. Yeah, yeah, J Rock my friend. I went to the fight. I seen him fight. He looked good, man. He looked real good. You know, I'm yeah. proud of him. He, now he got a title shot coming. You know what I'm saying? He worked hard. He I am in the position he was just in. Nobody wanted to fight him. Now he has the number one spot that gotta fight him. So yeah. right now that's what we working towards. So I think one or two more fights, I'll be in the same position to fight for a world title. All right. You know, I was hearing that you and Gamboa was going to get at it. Um, oh, man, me and Gamboa, man. You Gamboa, damn it, man. That that's boy, that boy is a beast, man. And it's crazy because we was supposed to fight, but we actually wasn't. But he didn't have an opponent for December. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I told him, like, listen, I'm here. So we talked in the inbox and all. He said maybe we can make it happen in 2016. But I think if man getting both fights, that'd be a mega fight, man. I know a lot of people want to see that fight. But like I said before, I don't know any top guys want to take that chance. Right. You know, I'm a fan. That would be a great fight, you and Gambo, because y'all both got a slick style. Yeah. That would be a, I'd be a fan. <laughs> I'd jump to my seat to watch that fight, man. My co-hosts was saying they love that fight too, man. Yeah. You know, I think I think right now, man, that's what the boxing world is missing, a lot of great fights. But who am I to say anything? <laughs> I'm just here to fight and train. Right. Are you Are you still training with Buddy McGirt? Mm, Buddy McGirt is not actually my trainer. He's not your trainer? Oh. No, he, not, y'all. He, I train with Rachim Jefferson oh, okay. and Raul, Raul Rivas, uh, Chino. Oh, okay. But any, anytime on the West Coast, which uh, we got a house out, uh, uh, condo out on the West Coast. So I can go out there anytime I want. Mm-hmm. But anytime I go out there, that's who I work with. I work with Buddy McGirt. Yeah, and that's he, what I was he, noticing. I was like, oh, okay, is this his trainer? Uh, yeah, yeah, he, no, he hell of a guy, man. But yeah, he talked very there, highly about you, though. Yeah, hell yeah, man. He, man, we both got uh, respect. The respect is mutual, man. He, and he, 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 he see the talent. He know. Like he told me before I left last week. He, he like. Uh, he said, man, tell me you're a bad boy, man. He's the only person that's going to beat you or yourself. And that's how I feel already. So even him telling me that made me feel even bigger about myself. He, and that's one thing I got over a lot of people, he, my confidence. I don't, I don't never second guess myself. When I walk into that ring, I feel like I'm in shit and I can't be beat. And he, every time I walk into the ring right now, he, I'm the guy to beat. Before, I had to go beat these guys. I was the underdog. I had to beat these people. They're like, oh, you fight him. Oh, you fight him. And I had to beat them. Now, when I step in the ring, I'm the guy to beat, and they fear me. So that's what give me the more advantage. And I know that. I know that they fear me. Mm. What was your hardest challenge in your pro career? Honestly, honestly, guy, I ain't really. I don't. I think none of them. Only way these dudes, these dudes only beat me because uh, I didn't have the right team behind me, and I was out of shape. I wasn't taking it serious. Mm. I, I barely trained, so that's the only way. Like for Drowser, I took that fight on the on a four or five day notice. Wow. Four or five day notice, and and, and, and I won eight rounds. Like, come on, now I'm saying, and, and and I beat him the first two or three, and then I gassed out. Mm. Now I'm saying, like, yeah. man, right what now, what made you take that on five days notice, man? That, that's... Like like I like I said before, I wasn't taking boxing serious. I didn't give a shit. Know what I'm saying. Yeah. I ain't really give a shit about boxing. I ain't really know shit about boxing. Right. So that's 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 to sum that up. But I still feel like an undefeated fighter. Okay, man. Cause like you know, a lot of people like not like not you, but there's a lot of boxers when they lose, man. They they lose they lose track on everything. But you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. You're one of the few that made it out. Like this made you motivated you to be a better person, a better boxer. Yep, I absolutely. Mean, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. That's why I got. That's why when I really make it, I got a story behind me that can sell. Like even now, I motivate a lot of kids coming up, man. In, in, in my inbox on Twitter, Facebook, in person, anywhere. Like I motivate a lot of people. They're like, damn, we seen where you came from. 
we see how you lost, and, and and you and you allow us to know that you can lose and still bounce back. So it's not the end of the world. So now when these dudes I had losing, they strive harder because they're like, damn, Tevin Foreman did it. Why can't I do it? That's that's the inspiration that I bring to the boxing world. Most people, most guys, they had a big amateur background and they get groomed. So there's really no motivation. Everybody looking outside in thinks that that's how it's supposed to be. So when they lose, they get discouraged. But I'm here to let people know, listen, it's okay to have a loss. You either learn from it or you don't learn from it. But we're going to learn from it because we've seen Tevin Foreman do it. So if he can do it, I can do it. Right. So are you are you planning to stay at 130 or are you moving up? Or? Listen, I'm getting titles and I'm moving up. I'm going to move up. Oh, so you, but you right now you claiming one thirty right now, right? Yeah, yeah, right now, right now I'm claiming one thirty. I want to unify the, the uh, division. I want to take every title in the division, then move up. That's that's what's up, man. That's that's what I want as a for a boxing fan, man. Because like I don't even remember the last undisputed champion. Can you tell me? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I, hell no. <laughs> like. <laughs> As boxing fans, we should at least know that. It's like, damn, I can't even remember who's the last undisputed champion. It's like you got four guys. What, what, what's your whole opinion on four guys can call themselves a world champion? Mm-hmm. So who I is think really the champ? Exactly. I think what I think is, personally, I think that we, they should start doing tournaments, man. Mm. They should start doing tournaments with all the champions. Because, like, if everybody got a belt, how the hell can there be so many champions in one division? Right. Four champions in one division. And the sad part about it is they're not fighting each other. Because you got one you got, you got one champion here at Golden Boy. You got another fan here at Top Right. You got another uh, champion here at... Uh, I hate man. I don't hate man. So, and they're not fighting each other. So how the hell is that possible? Right. It's not possible. Like, let's see who the world champion is. They gotta, I think the promoters need to get together and make big, big, mega fights. Man, I just I just dream to see that day because people don't understand the the word undisputed. Like, man, it sounds beautiful, man. It I'm sound fucking up. beautiful for real, dog. Like, I'm like, damn, man, these niggas, dog, they drawing, man. But um, yeah, it's crazy, it, man. Um, what you think? Um, who you think is the best at one thirty? If you take yourself out of the box, the best at one thirty. Yeah, champions. Out of the best in um, the, whoever you think is the best at one thirty, you know what I mean. Honestly, honestly, you want my honest opinion? Yeah, yeah, definitely. What <laughs> you know what I mean? We want you to be honest real. Opinion, I don't really, I don't really know a lot of people at one thirty. All right, can yeah, I say a I few really, names to you? Yeah, you can say a few names to me. Cause this is, I'm just gonna read you off for of the um pound for pound list. All right. All right, let me know. All right, um, you got. Oshiyama, who's been number one for like the past five to six years. Over in Japan? Yeah. You know Never Oshiyama, right? Never seen him fight. Um, He's the super WBA champion. Um, yeah, yeah, I know who he is, but I've never seen him fight. Oh, you never seen him fight? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, he beat that guy, Mauro, who fought Francisco Vargas, and Francisco Vargas beat him for the um for the WBC belt. On the Canelo yeah, 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 and Cotto card, well, he, he got to be good then. Yeah, um, he got Francisco Vargas number two. He got Moro, that Japanese fighter who fought Francisco. He got Salido number four. Ro- um, Rocky Martinez is number five, and he beat Salido. I, I don't understand that, but anyways, you got Fontuna number six, Pedroza number seven, Brian Vasquez from Costa Rica number eight, mm. nine. Saul Rodriguez and number ten Nicholas Waters. Well, honestly, I never really, I never really, uh, I never really seen most of them fight to be honest. Oh. I never really seen most of them fight to be honestly. And as honest as guys, most fighters lie. They all, you know, I don't know, know one thirty pounders. <laughs> but to be honest, I never seen. I seen Nicholas Waters fight. I seen for Drow to fight. I seen Petona fight. I seen Francisco Vargas fight. He on there too, right? Yeah, yeah. He's on. He's number two. If I had a choice, I I say Francisco Vargas beat all of them probably. Even so, he's fighting Salido June fourth on HBO. I say I say he beat all of them. For real? 
Yeah, yeah he, he. Well, I don't know about the guy from Japan because I never really watched him fight. But I say for Tico Vargas because he fought the guy Muro. Muro, what's his name? Yeah, Moore. Yeah, Muro. He, he, yeah. he a fuck. He's a warrior, man. Right. Yeah, warrior. And I think he'd be too much for Fatona. He'd be too much for all the other dudes. I, I, I think. I definitely. In order to beat him, you gotta be able to bang. Or you gotta have superior boxing skills like myself, and I had to throw me in there. Oh, uh, so you don't highly rate Rocky Martinez either? <laughs> no, nah, hell no. And he just don't. Even though I'm saying hell no, this had nothing to do with me disrespecting him as a person. Yeah, yeah. I think he's a great. I think he's a great guy, but I, hell no, I don't throw Rocky Martinez in there. Oh, okay. I don't throw Sludo in there. None of them motherfuckers. But you know what's so crazy? I um um Salido beat um Vasily, you know what I mean? And he's a high Yeah, but yeah, I, I understand you understand that, but you gotta think about it. It, it was it was uh Lomachenko first first fight in the pros. Right. You know, he got that experience. But I bet they fought today he wouldn't be able to get different stuff. And I spar Lomachenko. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I heard. Yeah, I definitely heard about it. You and Elliot's setback was, I, I, I'll i be watching y'all interviews and shit. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I probably don't want to know, yeah. Oh, wait, what you thought about him? Is he he a, that, he a monster. He a monster? Yeah, you just, just know this. I'm a motherfucking monster, but when, when I went there, I had to step my shit up. Mm. I had to step my shit up, and, and, and it was great work. He made me work the first two, one and two sparrings, he made me work, man. And I'm like, God damn. But but the spar every sparring after that, it was fucking work. Like we work. Like you're okay to see that spar. And and when you talk to him or if you have an interview him, whatever the case may be, he'll tell you himself. Like he'll tell him for him a good sparring partner, man. Mm. Man, the crazy uh, the crazy thing is is just that you know like how they have Vasily in the top ten of pound for pound and all the boxing. He's like what number four. Or num- I wanted to. How, how, how do they how do they rate pound for pound nowadays though? How do they rate that? I'm not. I, I don't I don't really know, man. Cause everybody got a different pound for pound right now. He got exactly, ESPN exactly. got pound. You got the Ring Magazine who's been doing it for so many decades. Um, that's, why really, that's why I don't really care for it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you if you if you're not a Floyd or Andre Ward that's guaranteed on the pound for pound list, mm-hmm. like with no doubt, I don't really care for it because everybody got a different pound for pound. Right. And now if it was one pound for pound list that the fans pick or whatever the case may be, I would say that. But just for a random person to pick a pound for pound list, like six different pound for pound lists, I don't really care for it. Right. No disrespect or nothing, but at the end of the day, it's about who's going to make the most money at right. the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Fuck a pound for pound list. I would want to be on pound for pound list one day. But it's about who will make the most money, had the most views on TV, and who going to win the most fights. That's it. So who, since we talked about a little bit on the one thirty, who you think might give you um, a challenge at one thirty? Not being biased. Yeah. Not being biased. Okay. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> nobody. Fuck no. Nobody. And I. And I not I, not I, even a sort of challenge, like in any yeah, kind of I way. Can, I can I can back my reasons up though. Oh okay. Yeah, let's start with the champion. One name a champion. I it's it's only it's only um well it's really four main ones but um f- you know how WBA got the regular champion and they got the super yeah all right but let me tell you the five they got they got um Oshiyama number one he's a super I, WBA I, I I never seen him fight so I don't know but I'll still be there but I never seen him fight oh, okay um you got Francisco that has a WBC. Francisco Vargas, all right, let's go, let's go one by one. Um, you got Rocky Martinez, who got the WBO. All right, let me tell you about Francisco Vargas first. He's a he's a warrior, man. He, mm. he's, a, he's a warrior. I know he can take his shot, mm. and I know he come to get everything. But the difference between me is the, I, I pick a two when I want to bang and when I want to box. See, and I have superb boxing skills. I can box my ass off, and I'm real slick. So all the shit he's throwing, I will not get hit with. And I'm in hella shape. I don't get tired. Right. That won't. That that would be. I think. But I don't, if I had to pick one, who would, who would be my toughest fight out of all of them? I would. Oh, I ain't say to all of them yet. I would. <laughs> I'll go ahead, no, I'll go ahead. I would probably say Francisco Vargas probably probably be my toughest, but he won't be hard. I will beat uh, him, but he won't be. He won't be hard. Oh, uh, 
Okay. I'll be for Tuna get tired. Yeah, Fortuna is the regular WBA, and you know Pedroza got the IBF. Yeah, you know Fortuna gets tired, and he 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 can't match me. He can't match. He just all around not. He he just not messing with me all around. He get tired too quick. He get wild. He get sloppy, and I'm real polished. I'm, I'm gonna pick up on every little bad thing you do. All right. Well, I. I and definitely, I'm I'm a, I'm a push like it's two people I'm I'm voting for be on the top man. Um, Nicholas Waters is my my number one favorite fighter, and you sit, you know what I mean you from Philly, you know what I mean I'm a be I'm a pro Philadelphia person, so I want you to head on the top man. So I'm I'm a push for the both of y'all to see whoever becomes number one in that division, man. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying. Appreciate it. Definitely, man. Um, so, t- t- um, tell me um more about your background, man. I want to hear more about your story, man, and your journey. Oh, you, you know, boxing? And, and uh, you, you know what I mean? Because we're getting to get to know you. We want the fans to know you a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Well, me, I never, I grew up, I wasn't rich. I wasn't, I wasn't rich as a kid, but I can tell you like this, I wasn't a poor kid. You know what I'm saying? Like I went, I can't, I, I can't even get on there and bash my mom because I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Most people get on there and say how they didn't eat and all that. <laughs> you right, I, right. I, I eat every night, man. You know what I'm saying? But I wasn't the richest, and you know, growing up, like I was a smart student. I wasn't all A plus and all E's, but I was. I had, I had a good life. Like far as me, I could have went to college if I wanted to, but I chose not to. And and, and boxing not my only way. Wasn't my only way out. I could have did multiple other things in life. Even if I quit boxing today, I would be okay. My life would be cool. Mm. But once I started my boxing career, I just wasn't taking it serious. A lot, I, I, a lot of people looked at me as an opponent. Uh, I had no management, no promoter, no nothing. So it was just me and one of my old trainers who really knew anything about the sport as far as politics and pushing the fighter. So, so you know. I got my loss and so on and so on. So I reached out to a friend of the family, which is Mark Chibarone, and I reached out to him. Uh, we talked. We talked. Then we then we didn't talk for some months. And then one day, I'm on, I'm on the end of my bed, and I'm going through my, I'm going through my contact list. So I'm like, damn. I'm just going through them. I'm sitting, it's, I think it's the summertime or whatever the case may be. I'm like, all right. It's summertime. I'm going through my stuff. I'm going through my stuff. So... I see his name. I said, let me call this. Let me call this dude. Now, I'm saying he's a friend of the fame for 30 years. So, I'm like, let me call him. And he knew me very well. I knew him very well. And I call him. And he like, let's sit down this week. I'm like, all right, cool. Say less. So, we sat down. We talked. We talked. Before I, lived, I was living in Philly and all that. So, we talked. We talked. We talked. And then, we, we went to a meeting. The first meeting, he, he like, all right, we, we, we going to move from Philly. Basically, to get focused, focus on what I got to do. Right. He moved from Philly. No, that's the first meeting. Second meeting, uh, this was four years ago, almost four years ago. Second meeting, he like, uh, we're going to see, we're going to get you a car. So I'm like, all right, see no more. So we, we went to look at different houses. So it was like a nice, it was like nice house. I looked at this house in Philly, like, but the, like the good part of Philly and South Philly, the good part of South Philly is not like a couple houses in Jersey. So I said, all right. So I finally moved out of Jersey. That was the first step. Second step was finding a new trainer, which at the time, at the time I wasn't uh, mature enough to make a certain decision. Because you know how people say loyalty this, loyalty that. And I'm all for loyalty, but loyalty to a certain extent. Fuck loyalty when they come, when they come to fuck hurting your career or hurting you. You got to be loyal to yourself first. Right. And saying that, I was like, I don't want to leave my training. So he, he talked to me, talked to me. So I'm like, all right, well, that's the decision I got to make. I had to make a decision. Is either stay with my training and be fucked up as far as boxing or uh, talk to him and leave like a man and and uh, and move on with my career. So I made the decision to find a new trainer. Right. And uh, with, I, I, I had meetings with different trainers. He was when I liked it. But I already had the one that I wanted, and his name was Chino. Raul Rivas, and, and, and I was already working with Rasheem Jefferson first, though, just after my other trainer. He came down to help me. And, you know, I got my first fight with him. 
I was sparring Danny Garcia actually for the Zab Judah fight. He, oh word! He, he, yeah, he seen me work with Danny Garcia, so he like, damn, this kid like he he I I never knew how far he wanted to take you with me. I just thought he was helping me out at the time. But once he seen that sparring, he like, damn. And then he started putting mad money behind me, buying me like uh, I, I had strength training every uh, three times a week. Uh, training, uh, any training I need, three times a day, and my body started getting differently. My uh, different, my trainer, uh, got I got uh, Chino Raul Rivas. He started teaching me new stuff, and then I fought. I look good. He got me another fight. I look good. So I fought seven times that year, and all and all good wins. The next year came. I got like uh, six or five fights. He got me. No, he got me a little less than that. I look good, right? Mm-hmm. And then here you come, Lou Bella. After I fought uh, Emmanuel Gonzalez, which was Golden Boy top prospect at the time, and they called me out when I was when I was out there in California training with uh, Lomachenko. They called me, and I was already in shape training. So I'm like, yeah, we take the fight. So I went I went out there. I fought on Fox Sports. I spanked Manny Gonzalez bad. That's when I started getting phone calls from different promoters. I could have signed with multiple promoters, but I decided to sign with Lou. I, th- I think he was the right choice. And then, since then, Lou got me a fight. You know, for another fight in uh, California again. Then he got me on ESPN. Then right after ESPN, he got me on HBO. And now, today, I'm where I am. HBO fight, which was the one you seen last. Right. And now I'm now one, now one of the hottest things in my in my division. And you know, that's see what's next. Uh, yeah, definitely, man. Um, who who who's your favorite fighter, man? <laughs> I'm gonna give you answers. You probably don't. Even, you probably be mad at me because I, I'm really telling the truth. I don't really have a favorite fighter, oh, but if I had to, if I had to pick who are my favorite fighter, I would definitely say Floyd. Yeah, cause I see I see Ellie setback saying like I read the title. I ain't, I ain't checked that video out. But um, I seen that he said he, that was the title, so I wanted to ask you for sure if that's really your. Yeah, I mean, I, won't have, I don't really have a favorite street fighter, but if I had to pick one, yeah, definitely be Floyd. And I know okay. you were asking that. Do you watch Pernell Sweepy Whitaker and all that stuff? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what's the crazy thing? I've always heard about him, but I've never like I've never watched him. You never watched Pernell Sweepy Whitaker? N- nah, I watch all the other guys, but. Like, you oh, know, your man. Tommy Hearns, your Mike Tyson. You know what I mean? Mike Tyson is the person that made me love boxing. Floyd oh, Mayweather so, is the first you, boxer you, if you, if I ever if you saw. you watched Sweetie Whitaker before, you think my slip game slick. Go check him out tonight. Okay. Yeah, because I end the cherry. But like, I've always heard about Pernell Whitaker. Because if you hear about all these slick style boxers, you always hear Pernell Whitaker. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's it. Um. And thing, man. I I always was a I was a big fan of Prince Nassim. I don't know if you was a fan of him. Yeah, he, yeah, I like him. Yeah, man. I, I love Prince Nassim, man. Before like it was a Floyd, and I mean Roy Jones and um, Prince Nassim, man. Them them niggas was like the show off type niggas, and with the slick style, and you know what I mean. What well, people love Floyd for the day, you know what I'm saying. Right, 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 right. But um, yeah, man, those. But um, you think fifty um Floyd gonna come back for his fifty fight? Mm, uh, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really speak on it. Oh, you don't uh, really speak he on might, it. He, he might, he might, he might not. Mm. He might, he might, he might not. But I hope he come back because <laughs> when he fight in Vegas, I'm flying out. <laughs> I hear that. So what you I'm think about out. Jamal Charlo versus? J Rock, man. Oh man, J Rock is a Philadelphian, man. That's my boy, all the, all all day long, man. And I'm happy for him. And I know he's going to take the title. That's guaranteed. Uh, he's going to take that title from Jamal. Mm. Well, for the fans that um, know you and J, um, are you saying that because you know J Rock? Nope. Or, no, or nah, you? I never. I'm not a biased person. So. Okay. If you ever talk to me, you anything I say is gonna be like one hundred, okay. maybe one, probably one on one. Cause you, I'm not biased. Cause if I thought he wasn't gonna be, it would be a good fight. But oh yeah, it's gonna be a nice little fight. But I just think that that, that Julian is gonna definitely take it, man. He, I think he won. I think he wanted more. Julian hungry. He, he 
He humble. He uh, he worked hard. Everything played a part. You know what I'm saying? Everything, everything flowed together mm-hmm. with that kid, man. And I see him, man. He 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 on the mission. He on the mission. He remind me of myself. Oh, okay. and, and that's a and that's a big to compare somebody with me is really big because <laughs> it's not it's not too many people out there that that got to work at the like I like I got I work man my confidence level is high and I never stop until I reach what I want to reach and he were I uh he remind me of the same person of me he he the same way his his, his style might not be like mine flashy but he have a unique style with everything he do is sharp. Powerful, he he really polished. Yeah, I got my money on J Rock on that fight. My one of my co-hosts, man, that he ain't make it on tonight. Box and I, we betting on that fight, man. He got Jamal, and I got J Rock. But I'm telling them, dog, them boys ain't lions, man. They're a bunch of lot. Well, um, they're well, a bunch of um. You see, your favorite fighter. I'm sorry, cut you off. You see, the favorite fighter is Nicholas Watson, right? Right. So, so, so when man him fight, man, you going to bat. So I whoop his ass. <laughs> Taking that bat. I, I'm not going to bat on that fight, man. Why? That's his favorite fighter. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know what I mean? I, I'm going to be a little. I'm going to be a. I'm going to be biased, man. <laughs> I'm going to be biased. I'm a, but I, I ain't going to bet on no money on that shit, man. He just, he just, he just put my stable me. Huh? He just fought my stable mate, Jason Sosa. Oh, that's oh, you friends with Sosa? Yeah, we All right, him, since you bring that topic up, since you bring that Sosa, man, who you thought won that fight? Like nope, I said before. I since you're not a biased person, I'm, I'm going to take your person. word for it. Listen, right. I'm not a biased person. I, mean, I had two decisions at the end. Okay. I said, this one decision. I said, it's either going to be a draw what are you gonna give with the niggas Walters? That's my that was that's my honest opinion. That's my honest opinion. So watch no. the fight. Why watch the fight? Watch the fight with the commentators all push mute. The Sosa landed uh, a lot of clean punches, man. They was going back at they was going back and forth every single round, man. And it wasn't no blowout. Now I'm saying it was a good fight, man. And I'm like, I just think Sosa landed a lot of clean punches on him, too. I watched the fight over and over. Nigga, watch got hit with a lot of punches. You know what I'm saying? I, I, since I let you lay off your um, point of view, man, I'm going to go in, man. Go in, when, man. <laughs> when I saw that fight, dog, like, Nicholas Waters, if you see it, like, I don't know if you really check out the punch stats and how and really take note of that. But Nicholas Waters landed more on the accurate, more on the harder shots, more on the effective shots. He landed more every round. But do you know I'll be trying to tell people this. Do you know landing more punches don't mean mean nothing? Do you know really know that? But you gotta really you gotta, you gotta really look at it. You gotta really mm. look at it, man. You, you gotta really, know you Go ahead, go Boy, ahead. I'm listening. No, I was saying, if if a person land more the power shot, the effective shot, and even the more majority of all in and punches, he he landed the three punch stats like in. So every- what if so so what if out of three rounds, right? Yeah. Say say you landed, say you landed two hundred in round one, right? That that's, that's stupid. I'm just I'm using an example. Yeah. So say you land two hundred punches in round one, right? Mm-hmm. And the other guy landed fifty, right? Mm-hmm. The guy that landed two hundred punches won the won that round, right? Right? It it, it um it, it gotta be, but you gotta well, know, it's, it's a difference. It, it no, can land listen. 200 pound um punches, but they but land correctly. It was flurry shots. Listen, where I'm going at with it. All right, go he ahead. Landed, he landed two hundred punches one round. The other guy landed fifty. Uh-huh. He won that round. He he won round one. Yeah, he won one. The, the next round, the next round, he landed, he landed, let's say he landed 50, and the other guy landed 60. Whoever landed the most, most likely going to win the round, right? But he only landed 60 punches, right? Right. Sosa landed 60 punches, Nicholas Watson landed 50. And then the next round, Sosa landed, uh, 
Sosa land land 60, Nicholas Walter land 50 again, right? Mm-hmm. So that's added up. 200 punches for Nicholas Walter, which he only won round one. Then round two and three, he lost, but he landed 50, right? He still landed more punches than, uh, he still landed more punches than Sosa, but he only won one out of three rounds. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I, I get I, I get what you're trying to say. He, he, he landed more punches than the person, but it's not about punches, it's about the rounds. You can land you can land so many more punches than me in one round, but the next two rounds you lack punches. At the end of the day, I won in two rounds, but you land more punches. So I don't really, I don't really, see, I look at shit from a different point of view. Right. But he had, he had, he had Sosa getting the hardest, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, man. I just edged it out in Nicholas Waters every round. It's very competitive. It was a very competitive fight. But I don't, um, I just thought Nicholas Waters did a, 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 a tiny inch better each round. But guess what? That's still Nicholas Watson, man. He's supposed, to, he's supposed to blow Jason Sosa out of the water, man. You know what's you know what so crazy? Well, Everybody listen, I'm, thought, I'm, I'm, no, I'm before before, I'm, before I'm, the I'm, fight I'm, even I'm, started, sorry to cut you that. off, bro. Let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. Everybody, he Nicholas Watson, Jason Sosa, only Jason Sosa to the world. They don't know. Yeah. To them, he's supposed to blow him out of the water. But to us, the guys in our camp, we knew what he was about. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, but going into the fight, man, before the fight started, like, I was um, watching the weigh-in and all these boxing meters, right? Like um, Steve Kim from Boxing Scene, Raging Baby, you know, pro Philly, yeah. Um, a bunch of these media um, journalists and all these guys and the prediction, the comments, everybody since, you know, Klitschko lost, right? You had yeah. um, Amir, um, Amir Mom lost, Lucas Matisse lost. So it was been last year. It was been last year on those couple weeks. It was the night of upset. So that in that ending November and October, December. Yeah, you know I'm saying because even Brian right. Jennings lost. So it was just a night of upset. So everybody that I respect said Nicholas Waters was going to lose that fight because they were just what? predicting that. So I'm like, hold up, man. They like putting that in the people's mindset, so I'm like, yo, I'm kind of fretting. Yeah, you know I mean, like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know I mean, Nicholas like, Fortune. hold up, maybe I don't know something. You know what I mean? Because right, I was right, like, right, right, right. Sosa yeah, had 13 KOs straight, so I'm like, okay, this probably this guy probably something not to be fucked with. But then when everybody you respect and you listen to and you follow say that shit, it's like maybe. Th- they putting me on to something. So when I saw that fight, I was like, man, that shit was crazy, man. But even yeah. like you said with the Pajos and Edna Cherry, you gotta beat the um the champion or the star, you know what I mean? So Yeah, you're right. So I just I just felt Nicholas Waters just did an inch better. It's not like Yeah, you gotta beat the star, but that was like a that wasn't you feel satisfied. You know what I'm saying? But that, that, I just, you know what I mean? That's how I looked at, it, at the fight, man. You know what I mean? But I know, I seen your prediction with the Vasily and Walters. I was like, man, that's kind of, that's kind of like, yo, kind of down when you said that shit, man. Nicholas what? uh. When you said it on Ellie Setback, on, um, with um, Vasily. on another level, man. Trust and believe me when I tell you. Trust and believe me. Trust me. And Sosa only had six amateur fights. Mm. Three. Three amateur fights. Sosa's still growing. Nicholas right. Walters Nicholas Walters couldn't can barely handle Sosa. And that's no disrespect to my to, to my brother, but I'm saying he only had three amateur fights. And he's still growing. Right. And that was his first big step of fight and Nicholas Walters could barely do anything. Imagine with a guy like Lomachenko, man. You gotta look at these things. But remember, styles make matchups, right? Styles make matchups, and, 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 and by me saying that, I look at that. Over. Remember, when um Vasily, if you think about it, Vasily has a problem with niggas that hard, like you know what I mean, nah. like Toledo. N- niggas watches. You gotta, niggas you gotta watches. remember, like you know how Floyd say, man, nobody got the code, like the Da Vinci Code beat the Da Vinci Code, nobody got the blueprint. But she right, right, got right. a little blueprint. You know what I mean? 
Man, I, I, I beat the, I beat the balls off Nicholas. <laughs> no, I'm Listen. saying I'm talking about Vasily, oh, Vasily no, and um um and um Nicholas Waters. How Salido beat him? Yeah, you know I'm saying that style had the blueprint of beating Vasily. You see what I'm saying? And this is a nigga who I don't really like to judge people losses, but this is a nigga who has 13 losses. Yeah. Yeah, you know I'm saying you gotta. Yeah, you know I mean, so it's like you gotta put that in the equation. Like I see Vasily beat every boxer, but when it comes to a, a somebody who's gonna not let him give. Basically, rugged, a rugged style. Yeah, rugged style. Like remember, um, I even his manager said he didn't even want to fight Nicholas Waters because. He didn't want the same thing to happen to him like the Salido fight. That's right. why they turned away from the fight when Nicholas Waters um, lost the belt in a scale. His yeah. manager, um, I forgot how to pronounce his name. Oh, uh, Nicholas Waters? No, um, Vasily manager. Oh, Egan. Yeah, Egan. Yeah, him. He said, yo, I don't want Vasily fighting because I don't want the same things happen like the Salido fight because Salido used his weight and uh, used everything of to to beat Vasily and shit. So it's like I got to look on to that, you know what I mean? Right. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't rate Nicholas Waters. He got a great jab, you know what I mean? Yeah, he got will. a great jab, you know what I'm saying? If he can stay smart and stay focused and Use that body shot, use that jab, so don't let Vasily come in. He can win that mm-hmm. fight, man. You know what I'm saying? But Vasily can, you know, also, I'm not going to even say it, but he can give him a great competition. Right, right, <laughs> you right. You know what I mean? But, it's all good. I respect all boxers, man. I wish them the best, man. Mm-hmm. March 30th, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to take that belt. Right. Move forward in my career and hopefully fight the next big name out there, and I'm willing to take all, all, all challenges. Right, Devin, man. I hope I hope I get to see you and Gamboa and the Cherry next, man. After your fight, yeah, after it's, your victory. Yeah. Long, as long as the fans continue to push for it, it can happen. Yeah, definitely, man, man. Uh, um, can you give out your social media, people, where to find you at, and um, oh, where they, they can, can buy me. your tickets for your next fight? Well, let me let me look up this number. Let me look up this number real quick. Uh, one second. Uh, let me see. Let me get this number down. The brother sent it to me. <laughs> okay, there you go. Well, they can they, they can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, uh, and Snapchat at seven former twenty two. All of them the same. And they can on Facebook. Um, I got too many friends. So I don't even want to get that out, but that's Tevin Farmer. They can still follow that too. I'm tripping. Tevin's successful former. And March 30th, uh, you can purchase tickets and call uh, the brother's office 212 947 2577. Yeah, man. Hell, man, I would love to have you on again, man, after your victory, bro. Yeah, man. You just just let me know. I know it's like kind of hard contacting me, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Man, I really wanted to have you and Edna Cherry on the same night, so you could um we could have tried to set this thing up, man. See, maybe yeah, after, I'm gonna focus on the thirty and fighting after that. Yeah, uh, after that, make it happen. We can make that happen. Definitely, definitely, man, man. But fo- yo, follow me back on your uh, young Barzini, man. All right, I'm going to follow you right now. Yeah, on Twitter and Instagram, I'm following you right now. So, yeah, I mean, you'll see it. Young Barzini. I got you right now. Oh, shit. Yeah, I got you. He, you got to go on, uh, go on, uh, you got to, uh, hit me. Or right, I, I got you. Yeah, I got you. You see? Or you want me to? I'm following you and follow you again so you can see. Nah, 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 I got it. Okay. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on Facebook right now. I'm going to that, so. Yeah, yeah, man. So, yeah, man, definitely, man. Thank you for coming on, man. 
And um, good luck you know, on your fight March 30th. I know you don't need a luck, but... No, all, all of it's good, man. I take all of it up, man. It's all good. Yeah, definitely, man. Thank you again, man. It's definitely an honor, man. Philly support Thank Philly, you. bro. Yes, sir, man. Appreciate you, man. Have a good night, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, cool. Have a blessed night. All right.